Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Hamid Idris Awate. Hamid Idris Awate is considered the father of Eritrean independence struggle. He founded the Eritrean Liberation Army, which was the armed wing of the Eritrean Liberation Front. He was born on the 10th of April 1910 and died on the 28th of May 1962. Awati was born Gerset in what was then called Italian Eritrea. He belonged to the Tigray ethnic group. His father, a peasant, trained him in his childhood in the use of guns. In 1935, Awati was drafted by the Italians to serve in the colonial army of the Eritrean Askari. Besides being fluent in a number of languages including Arabic, Tigre, Tigrinya, Nara, Hedareb, and Kunama, Awate mastered the Italian language very well within a short period of time. This made him a preferred choice for further military training in Rome. Upon returning from Italy, he was appointed security officer in Western Eritrea. Shortly after, he served as deputy chief, that is mayor, of the city of Kassala in Sudan and its surroundings during the brief Italian occupation of that city in 1940-1941 at the beginning of World War II. He fought in the Italian guerrilla war in Eritrea against the British and Ethiopians in World War II. After the defeat of Italy by Great Britain in World War II in Eritrea, Awate settled in western Eritrea but eventually had a conflict with the British authorities and began an armed resistance against the British presence. The conflict began when at the end of the World War II, the British soldiers carrying out an operation to recover hidden arms in western Eritrea began seizure of properties and killing cattle of the localities in Gash, Setit and Barka areas. In a self-defense, Awate shot and killed one of the soldiers. The British authorities came after him and he was forced to leave as a fugitive for a while. But Awate raised a group of 40 men and continued to resist British occupation. The armed campaign lasted from 1942 to 1949 and their activities greatly disturbed the British that they reached out to Awate and came to an agreement that ended the hostilities. In the meantime, the movement for Eritrea's independence was taking shape and the hope was to achieve independence by peaceful means rather than merging with landlocked Ethiopia. At the time, Eritrea was loosely federated with Ethiopia under the sovereignty of Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. In 1958, a group of Eritrean exiles in Cairo, Egypt, founded the Eritrean Liberation Movement with Awate as the leader. Also, the Eritrean Liberation Front ELF, was formed in Cairo in July 1960 by young Eritrean students and intellectuals. Back home, the Ethiopian authorities were not comfortable with Awate's activities and were watching him closely. Ethiopian police force planned to arrest him in his village in August 1961 but Awate got intelligence about the plan and fled to Mount Adol located in the west of Agodat. Awate did not hastily start an armed resistance against Ethiopia. The decision was reached after a period of long deliberations with other nationalists. When he agreed to lead the resistance, he had only six rifles and seven men and the men later grew to 13. Although with very minimal men and arms to start, and generally poor preparations, Awate and his men began their resistance against the Ethiopian occupation driven by a belief in a just cause. After declaring his resistance, the Ethiopian authorities made a number of attempts to capture Awate but failed. When in August 1961, the Ethiopian authorities sent a message appealing to Awate to end his resistance, he responded saying, if you want us to end our armed struggle, then you better lower the Ethiopian flag and raise up the Eritrean flag. 
the Eritrean flag which had been raised since December 15, 1952, had been lowered in December 24, 1958 and replaced by the Ethiopian flag. On the 1st of September 1961, Awate led 11 rebels and attacked police posts in the west of Eritrea. A fierce battle followed between Awate's and Ethiopian forces, lasting several hours and ending with neither side gaining the upper hand. But it was enough to make the Ethiopian authorities realize they were dealing with a strong adversary. On the 27th of May 1962, Awate told his unit he was feeling unwell after drinking milk for dinner. By the next day, he died. Further findings showed his death was as a result of wounds he got from recent battles. However, fearing Awate's death may affect the liberation struggle which was already building momentum, it was not reported until four years later in 1966. Though Eritrea's independence was not achieved in his lifetime, Awati's pioneering struggle provided the solid foundation that ensured the country's eventual independence. As a mark of honor for their national hero, a statue was erected at his grave by the government of Eritrea on the 1st of September 1994. In Italy also, Awati was honored by the town of Colonna Monzese near Milan. A tree was dedicated in his name in the Aldo Moro Park called Garden of the Just of the World. What have we missed out of this biography of Awati? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.